record and li live stream to Council's Facebook and YouTube pages. I would ask everyone to please turn on all mobile phones to silent mode. Please be aware that a hearing loop is available in the Council Chamber. Staff members are able to assist you with this at any time during the meeting. Please remain quiet in the gallery so that everyone can hear the meeting. Anyone disrupting the meeting may be asked to leave. I'd also like to remind all members of the public watching the live stream that a copy of the agenda and information explaining Council meetings can be found on the Council website. Tonight you will see in the agenda we have 24 reports in open Council and zero in closed Council, a transparency rate of 100%. I will now move to reading of the prayer, so I will ask you all please stand while I call upon Father Kevin Dance of St Paul Apostle Endeavour Hills to read the prayer. Uh, thank you very much and I bring the greetings of my wonderfully diverse community of St Paul Apostle in <coughs> Endeavour Hills. We pray. Oh God, you are the ground of our being. You are the horizon of all our thoughts. At this time of challenge, may your Holy Spirit guide and inform all our conversation and our decisions. May compassion and hope give strength to our choices. And we ask all these things with great confidence through Jesus Christ, our brother and our Lord, Amen. 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 Thank you, Father Kevin Dance. Please remain standing while I call upon Ms. <coughs> Kathy Bergstaller from the KC Multi Faith Network to read the faith statement. The KC Multi Faith Network exists to promote peace, harmony, and understanding, and to do so in partnership with KC Council and the wider KC community. We aim to spread knowledge and clarity about what different religions or worldviews believe, teach and practice. We believe that all members of religions and faiths have the right to peacefully practice and celebrate their own religion in a shared attitude of friendly coexistence and cooperation with all other peoples. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cathy Mook. Bergstahler from the Casey Multi-Faith Network, and I'll ask everyone please be seated. Thank you. <coughs> the City of Casey acknowledges we, that we are on the traditional land of the Bunurong and Wurundjeri people, and we pay our respects to Elders past and present. I'll now move on to apologies. Are there any apologies for tonight's meeting? We have Councillor Saray and Councillor Rowe. Are there any other apologies tonight? Can I have a mover and seconded that these apologies be accepted? Moved by Councillor Cristani, seconded by Councillor Gillidge. Is there any dissent? And that is carried. Um, I'll like a mover and seconder to move the suspension of local law until I determine to reapply local law. Moved by Councillor Stapleton, seconded by Councillor Jackson. Are there any uh, um, abstaining to that, or any dissent to that? That is carried, thank you. Um, the first um, item that we, councillors and officers, all discussed was um, the remarkable work of Robin Seddons, who's sitting up in the gallery over many, many years, decades and decades, in our community. And there isn't anything she hasn't been involved with. She's at all our meetings and contributes tirelessly, and an amazing person, and we were informed it's her birthday today. So we'd like to give her a big round of applause. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Stapleton back down on leading the, the, the song. So just thought I'd bring that up. But Sorry, we Robin. hope you have many, many more decades and decades of great work and your support uh, for this council and all the people you help. So again, well done to you. Thank you very much. Robin. We also like to invite uh, young people and people of all ages to come along and experience uh, Casey Council, and I'm going to ask Councillor Cristani to introduce a very special guest that has, she's been working with about all aspects of Council over the last few weeks. Thank you, Councillor Cristani. Thank you, Miss, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I'd like to introduce Josh Fowler and his mum, Kim. Um, so if you'd like to stand, Josh, and say hi to everyone. You can wave to the live streaming too. <laughs> 
Josh. Um, I knew Josh's mum for several, for a couple of years, and we met at Bible study actually, and um, contacted me saying Josh was interested in work experience at council because Josh has a desire to go into a field of politics, uh, potentially science as well, maybe both. And um, so I've got you plugged in. I thank very much Reese and Holly, and um, uh, there was someone else too that helped me, uh, forgive me, but for, for getting you plugged in. So I asked Josh if he could read the agendas, and they're quite bulky, <laughs> and he did a fabulous job of absorbing most of it. Uh, just following the meeting is another challenge. Don't worry, it took me years, and I'm still trying to get my head around it. But uh, Josh was actually the winner of the 2017 Federation Uni Challenge um, Science Award for the invention of a robot for an environmental purpose Ooh. in um, changing the pH levels in our ponds and our and our waterways. So, which is an incredible feat. So that you might be able to develop that in your science career, and then come on council and get the funding or you know, do do what you would like to do. So, I wish you all the best, Josh, in your endeavours. And um, I hope that your time with us will be effective and um, will be uh, fulfilling. Uh, Josh is also going to take part in our upcoming civic dinner, citizenship ceremony, and attend uh, a couple more meetings along the way in order to get the, the hours he's required. So all the best, Josh, and you're the next generation, and I um, we'll wish you all the best. Thank you. Well done, Josh. And when you attend citizenship ceremonies, for those in the gallery, last time there were Melbourne caps and little Melbourne footballs handed out, and there's a rumour going around Councillor Cristani wants you to hand out West Coast ones, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen. But you're in the best hands, Councillor Cristani taking you under her wing, showing you how it all works, and I hope one day great people and many more like you join council and make a huge positive difference to the community. So once again, from all the councillors, well done, and all the people in the community and the city of Casey. Thanks, Josh. Uh, one other item I do have, and I'd like to read, read this out, it's um, all about Refugee Week. Originally celebrated in 1880, sorry, 18, 1986, Refugee Week runs from the 17th of June to the 24th of June, coincides with World Refugee Day on the 20th of June. Refugee Week informs the community about refugees and celebrates positive contributions made by refugees to Australian society. Refugee Week also aims to help people understand the many challenges refugees face and focus on how the community and service providers can provide a safe and welcoming environment. On Sunday, the contribution of East Timorese families living in Casey will be recognised through the launch of the book titled From Timor-Leste to Australia, Seven Families. Three generations tell their stories. Students from Glen Eagles Secondary College interviewed family members and recorded their stories. Jan Tresais from Friends of Amira edited these into a collection of poignant stories and poems until now have not been recorded or published. The book is to be launched on Sunday the 24th of June at Bunjil Place at 3pm. This launch and Refugee Week celebrations in the winter community will be an opportunity for Council and the Casey community to recognise the courage and resilience of these East Timor refugees and the valuable contribution they have made and continue to make in the city of Casey. So I just thought that was very, anyone who wishes to go to that event will be on our website or you can simply ring up customer service and they can fill you in with that. I now determine local law reapplied and I'll move to confirmation of minutes. Is there a mover and seconder to confirm the minutes of the council meeting held on Tuesday the 5th of June 2018? Moved by Councillor Stapleton, seconded by Councillor Jackson. Is there any dissent on that matter? That is carried. Is there a mover and seconder to confirm the minutes of the planning meeting conducted, uh, held on the Tuesday the 12th of June 2018? Moved by Councillor Aziz, seconded by Councillor Flannery. Any dissent? That is carried. Is there a mover and seconder to confirm the minutes of the general purposes meeting held on Tuesday the 12th of June 2018? Moved by Councillor Jackson, seconded by Councillor Stapleton. Uh, is there any dissent on that matter? Then that is carried. Declarations of interest. Does any councillor have a conflict of interest or personal interest that they wish to declare for tonight's meeting? No. I'll move on to officers' reports to be withdrawn. Um, I know councillor says you wanted 6.1, but I want that one. Oh, I get it. Yeah, okay, but I'm giving you 6.11. Councillor Aziz, you have 6.11. Thank you, Mr Mayor. 
Sorry? Thank you. That's all right. <laughs> um, Councillor Cristani. 6.4, Mr Mayor, thanks. 6.4, Councillor Cristani. Uh, Councillor Rosario. 6.12, please, Mr Mayor. 6.12 for Councillor Rosario. Councillor Smith. Uh, 6.13, 6.16, 6.18. 6.18. Any other councillors wish to withdraw any items? Is there a mover and seconder to adopt the recommendations listed in the officer's reports that have not been withdrawn for further discussion as follows? Uh, 20, 6.21, 6.22, 6.23 and 6.24. Can I have a mover that they be moved? Moved by Councillor Stapledon, seconded by Councillor Jackson. Any dissent on that? Then that is carried. Thank you very much. We'll move on to public question time, so I'll hand over to Ms Sheena Frost. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. We have received two questions tonight from Laura Murray on behalf of Aldi. Is Ms Murray in the audience? Thank you for your questions. Uh, the first question is, what traffic analysis and strategic work was undertaken by Council in 2006 to justify an open space and pedestrian enhanced area at this main intersection of Bakewell Street and South Gippsland Highway. It concerns the draft Cranbourne Town Centre Structure Plan 2018. And this question will be answered by Nicole Award Manager, City Planning. Um, thanks, Ms Murray, for your question. The Cranbourne Town Centre Structure Plan 2006, which has been superseded, <coughs> identified a future open space in this location in conjunction with a range of streetscape upgrades and improvements, which were considered good urban design outcomes and intended to improve the amenity of the area. This was a long-term project which relies on slowing of traffic and lowering vehicle numbers which travel along the South Land Highway. A range of further strategic projects and traffic and transport analysis have also since been undertaken. This matter was also discussed at the planning panel for Amendment C204, changes to the Cranbourne Town Centre Activity Centre Zone. Council will continue to engage with all stakeholders when the panel report is made public and the panel's recommendations on the issue are known and as further planning for improved open space in the Cranbourne Town Centre is undertaken. And the second question, also from Ms Murray, thank you for your question. Has Council investigated the traffic maintenance costs and any upgrades required for alternative vehicle routes should this occur? And again, this question will be answered by the Manager City Planning. No, Council hasn't investigated this in any detail at the moment. It's a long-term project. These are costs which would be further investigated and determined at the time of delivering streetscape <coughs> upgrades in conjunction with key stakeholders such as Audi, Vic Roads and other affected landowners. As further planning and improvements are undertaken for the Cranbourne Town Centre, Council will continue to liaise with all affected stakeholders. There are no further questions, Mr Mayor. No further questions. Thank you, Officer Ward, and thank you, Ms Frost. We'll move on to officers' reports was withdrawn for discussion. 6.1 was withdrawn for, by myself. Uh, tonight we will hear and consider six submissions received in response to the public notice placed by Council in the Berwick Cranbourne News and published on Council's website, inviting submissions under S223 of the Local Government Act 1989 in relation to the draft 2018-19 budget. Can I ask for Mr Chris Innes to come down to the lectern on behalf of the Casey Basketball Association? Uh, Chris, you have five minutes for your presentation. When the presentation is complete, councillors may ask you questions or have comments to make. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and good evening, Mayor and, Mayor and councillors. Um, the Casey Basketball Association would like to put in a, a, a revised amount in terms of the proposal that has been listed in the budget. We do take the unusual step of actually taking the opportunity to address council because we understand that there is an outstanding tenancy agreement and that has been 
ongoing discussions between council and the Basketball Association for an extended period of time. And we fully accept and understand that there are frustrations both at officer level and, council, and the councils who have been involved in those previous discussions and also by the, by the, the board itself. But I can only reiterate that during that time, all parties have been in full full discussions, and we are now nearly reaching a conclusion in towards that matter. I'd just really like to take this opportunity for more so for the councils to have an understanding of of what has transpired over that time. One of the main concerns that the association has always had with these arrangements has just been the cost of operating the facility. Not in terms of the cost, but the board in having to make such decisions with, with the lease needed some comfort around what the long-term operating costs of the facility was going to be. The terms of the lease were, were consistent with the stadium management, which is over a five plus two plus two year option. And if you accumulate that over what the association would be paying over time, that can add up to around three, three to three and a half million dollars. When the draft agreement was presented to the association, the annual licence fee was left blank. So again, I ask you, would you sign a contract which did not have a licence fee attached for the next seven years? And we understood that that fee is unlike, sorry, and we understand that that is unlike a normal tenancy agreement when you generally have a base fee, which is indexed over an extended period of time, you have some comfort over what those costs were going to be. In this circumstance, which the association accepts, the fees are directly linked to the user fees and charges outside of the budget. So while that does give us some comfort in terms of the fees, Obviously that is going to change from year to year and as the structure is, we still don't know what the costs are in the preceding second, third and, and fourth year. So part of the discussion is trying to get some comfort about what will be the annual increments over those period of time and trying to get some of those comforts. It is a little bit disappointing that in 6.1 of attachment A, there is a statement there that the fees and charges proposed are in accordance with the proposed tenancy agreement. The original proposal that was put on the table merely reflected what we had agreed, which constituted a peak rate, an off-peak rate, and council were kind enough to also give a concessional rate for training for our junior, our junior program. We thought that that would be the basis of which the agreement was going to be set. All negotiations were structured around that. We'd nearly reached final terms and conditions, and then this year, we then said, hang on, the golf posts have been moved, now we're going to introduce a stadium fee, and I won't go into the details as to the cost, because that is outlined in, in our submission. Needless to say that we feel, again, that that cost is considerably excessive, and we don't feel in part of the program that it's associated to, that it's economically viable for the association to be incurring that sort of fee, as it will have a direct impact on, on the spectators because they enjoy being close to the courts, they enjoy that side of the atmosphere and to not be in a, and to not be in a position to pull out that grad stand, which obviously councils invested a civic, significant amount of money in, in order to provide that, that stadium, is a, what we feel is a significant detriment, not only to us as association, but also the member, our members and also the other basketball fraternity that come from all over Victoria to play at the stadiums as our association is involved in a program which is Victoria wide. So people do come in from all over state, they love the stadium, they love the stadium as it is. We receive nothing but glowing compliments and I believe you know, Councillor Stapleton herself has also been in receipt of, of many of those um, compliments as well. So this is purely just a matter of trying to bring this all to a head. 30, 30 seconds. And, thank you. And we are not making any um, other, other issues other than to say, we accept whatever the budget is, the budget will be. That will then form the terms and conditions. We just ask council to give consideration to, to this fee and whatever will be, will be in terms of your decision. And we're not making any conditions in terms of our ones mo moving forward. Thanks for your presentation, Chris. And um, as councillors, we have been having ongoing discussions about this. So we've actually asked Councillor Stable and wanted to make some remarks on our behalf. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Mr Mayor and Chris. Thank you very much for that presentation. Um, I have had a chat with most of my fellow councillors in terms of uh, your presentation tonight, and I've also spoken to the council officers. And what we'd like to do is um, to further those discussions in the next week before we adopt the budget. Uh, so if you if you would be on standby for a call from our officers, I believe there's an agreement um, that we will contact you and meet with the necessary people within your association and just discuss this further. Probably one of the things I would ask you would think of before um, that meeting occurs is, are there any savings that you can identify and put forward on the table to see, to make it better, um, so the, a better cost shift for yourself and also um, beneficial to, um, you know, the running costs of the facility? Just, no, just to have a think before that meeting. Yep. You don't have to answer that now. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say we do have an answer and we have oh, put our, okay. we, yeah, we in, have- in your Sorry? In that submission, yep. we, we have clearly uh, outlined Chris, that we, I'll just we are prepared up, it's, to do it's, that. It's yeah. not, I don't really want to get, get into debate no, here. Right. Um, I think the meeting, in the discussions we've had with Councillor Stable and all councillors, I, I think we're all aware that there's, there's some issues there that need to be ironed out for the benefit of you and, 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 and hopefully we can sort those out. So we look forward to the meeting and Councillor Stabling gives me a time. I'd like to be at the meeting myself, if possible. Um, so we do thank you, Chris, for your presentation, and I uh, look forward to seeing you at the meeting. Great. So thank thanks, you for your thanks, time. Thanks very much. Thank you. Um, can I ask for Reverend Tim Costello to come down to the lectern on behalf of the Alliance for Gambling Reform? Uh, Reverend Costello, ha you have five minutes for your presentation. When your presentation is complete, Councillors uh, will ask any questions or make some comments. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. A delight to be here. I think I'm coming back for your uh, inaugural uh, prayer breakfast. I think I'm speaking at that, so congratulations on that also. So the Alliance for uh, Gambling Reform has three aims. The elimination of poker machine design features that increase the likelihood of addiction. Features such as losses disguised as wins, you think. You've had a great win uh, when you have a win on one line, you're playing the other five lines and you're down and all the bells and whistles go off and the adrenaline pumps and this is profoundly addictive. Secondly, near misses, where you're only ever one pyramid above or below the line for the jackpot. It's actually a loss as soon as you've pressed the button. This is highly deceptive that it actually makes you think you had a near miss increasing addiction. We are pushing for one dollar maximum bets and maximum hourly lo loss rates on pokies of $120 per hour. At the moment, the five dollar bets, you can light it, load up $5,000 in one go on a machine, which does rapid damage very quickly. We aren't prohibitionist. We recognise the pokies are here. We say, like speed humps, safety belts, restrictions in driving a car at 100k when most of our cars can go 250k. There are harm minimization measures that $1 bets, maximum losses actually can save marriages and people going bankrupt. The third aim, most importantly for a council, is changes to licensing regulations for poker machines that enable communities to have a say over the location of the machines in their community. You all know that most of the pokies infest the poorest postcodes. And there's a reason for that. I don't have time in five minutes to explain that, but councils closest to the community should actually have far greater say with their communities on the number and where those machines are. That's why the Alliance exists. We'll have nearly 30 councils joining us in 2018, 2019, up from uh, 12 uh, just two years ago. And councils are joining because state governments get the revenue. Councils have to deal with the problems. And councils need to join because Australia has the greatest gambling losses of any country in the world. 25 billion a year. That's $1,000 per head. 13 billion of that comes from pokies. The country that comes second in gambling losses is 40% lower than us, $600 per head. Australia, $1,000 per head. We often look at Americans and guns and say, how can they? The rest of the world looks at us 
and gambling and pokies and say, how can they? In terms of losses, they're on the rise again. They're up 6% from pokies um, in this calendar year. That's an extra $10 million a month. And why should Casey be a member of the Alliance? Because you suffered the second largest losses in the state as a municipality, 129 million. That's up 2.28 million from last year. Only Brimbank Council is higher than you, $134 million of losses. So at this rate, with the rise, you're headed for a loss of about 134 million. That's $367,000 a day. If only half of that was spent in local businesses because poker machines don't create jobs, you just have to have someone who empties them, that is enormous prosperity for local businesses with the diversionary spend that's going on with pokies. I want to commend you. You have a very strong policy to reduce gambling harm. You updated it in 2015, and we need, at the Alliance, your leadership. I don't need to go through all the losses uh, from the Berwick Springs Hotel to Hallam Tavern, Fountain Gate, Prince Mark, Hampton Park Tavern, Lynbrook. I think you know about the owner, uh, Mazen Tabbert, failing to deliver a promised $100,000 contribution to the community. 30 seconds, Tim. Thank you. Sorry? 30 seconds. Oh, 30 seconds, right. Uh, sorry. Can, can but football, cl <laughs> <laughs> football clubs are leading the way. Now even Woolworths, which has the most pokies in Australia, are saying this is a shabby, shoddy business we need to get out. So we're here to say this is an issue that we need your support on in joining the Alliance. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Um, I'd just like to say we did recently just have a briefing on, on gambling and particularly places here in Casey, so you're reinforcing what uh, we're aware of and fully support what you're doing. I think it's fantastic. Thank you. Um, Councillor Aziz, did you want to say something? I just have a question, if possible. All right, I'll allow that. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. First of all, Tim, it's a pleasure to meet you in person again, and thank you very much for uh, making the time to be with us in Casey. Uh, could not uh, agree more with you in terms of the presentation, but I just wonder if we could just achieve a bit more clarity <coughs> on the size of the problem in Casey, because I think you mentioned that the, uh, I think you spoke about um, per capita figures for Australia. For Australia, yep. And then you mentioned a headline losses figure for Casey, and you said that we're only second to Brimbank. In council areas in Victoria, That's yes. That's right, but mm. that headline figure doesn't take account of the fact that, I'm not belittling the problem, but I think it's important to contextualise it doesn't take account of the fact that the city of Casey is in fact the largest city by population yeah. in Victoria. Yeah. So it would be fascinating to translate that figure, I think you mentioned $130 million, mm. uh, as a per capita figure and then do a comparison just so that we're fully contextual. We, we're happy to do that work. Look, uh, in Victoria, because our voice is strong, it is far less problematic than New South Wales Council's. Yeah. Australia has 20% of the world's pokies. 10% of the world's pokies are in New South Wales. Mm -hmm. It is simply breathtaking. Mm -hmm. So by comparison to other councils in Victoria, Casey may not be number one, you're right. By comparison to New South Wales councils, most Victorian councils aren't suffering as much. Mm -hmm. But the politics, without going into it, is utterly captured yeah. by gambling interests. So I take your point. Look, all I want to say in response is I didn't get involved in this issue by accident. I was a pastor, a minister at St Kilda Baptist Church before I went on and became mayor of St Kilda. And a woman in the church, some marriage problems, but she didn't drink, she didn't smoke. She started playing the pokies when they came she stole $60,000. I was a lawyer. I represented her and she got four years jail. I started going, how does a person who's law-abiding, who's hard-working, get turned into a criminal? The answer, it's the machines. We say, no, it's individuals. They've got to be responsible. Yes, the machines are built for addiction. Now we know because both the Productivity Commission and any amount of research has said 50 cents in every dollar going through a machine comes from someone addicted. My point being, overall per capita figure is important. We can get that to you. The individual stories are utterly tragic, mm. utterly tragic. So that's why we need you to be part of it. Uh, thank you, Tim. I appreciate that answer. I've just done a quick calculation and I'm happy to say that uh, 325,000 residents into 130 million is actually $400 per resident. 
every dollar is unacceptable, but it's, it's, uh, can I just point out that it's actually less than half of the national uh, uh, Now let me, capital. let me, I, I, I misled you a bit. A thousand dollars losses per head is all gambling in Australia. Right. So that's sports betting, horses, greyhounds, whatever. Mm -hmm. Pokies is 13 billion of the, uh, so that's half, so uh -huh. you would say $500 yeah. per head from pokies roughly. Yeah. You're still under, yeah. but it's... We're still on par, and as I yeah, say, Tim, indeed. every dollar is unacceptable, and I just wanted Good. to yeah. highlight that, yeah. that's all. Thank you very much. It's figures and figures, yeah. aren't they? Th yes. Thanks, Councillor Risen, and thanks, Tim, very much. Are there any other councillors, any questions or comments to make? Go for it, Wayne. Then uh, can we... I uh, thank you very much for your presentation, Tim, very informative. Thank you very much. Uh, can I ask Mr James Marshall to come to the lectern? Mr Marshall, you have five minutes for your presentation. When presentation is complete, councillors may ask questions or have comments for you. Is Mr James Marshall here? No? Well, we'll um, he may be coming late, so we'll come back to that. Um, I might go, move on to Ms Angela Davies to come to the lectern. Uh, Ms Davies, you have five minutes for your presentation. Again, after it's complete, councillors may have questions or comments for you. So is Ms Angela Davies here tonight? No? I'll, I'll ask again when we're complete. We have two others that I can put forward. Um, can I ask Mr Jihush Prasad to come to the lectern? Is Jihush here tonight? No? Can I ask for Mr. Brendan Brown to come to the lectern on behalf of the city, on behalf of the Casey Residents and Ratepayers Association? Mr. Brown, you have five minutes for your presentation. After the presentation, councillors may have questions or comments they wish okay. to make. I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor. Um, my name's Brendan. Uh, I do feel very unprepared. Uh, just uh, the city of Casey somehow lost our submission. So I spent um, our... Uh, preparation time trying to find out what went wrong there. So I thank them for giving us the time here. Um, you probably haven't, as a consequence, had time to look at the submission, but in the conclusion we point out where um, over a million dollars worth of savings could, could have been made uh, through this year's budget and last. And we believe that that's really just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, because of the lack of detail in, in what is in the budget. Um, I'll just focus on three um, of our seven recommendations and can only say, you know, I hope people do get hold of the submission and get a chance to read it at some point. Um, and what we're asking councillors to do is to consider how they can commit to the people of Casey. Uh, and, and we as an organisation, we're committed to, to trying to uh, stand up for affordable rates and for good governance. Uh, one of the things that struck us um, in the budget is the 9.3% increase in our garbage charge. And it just left us scratching our heads um, why a, a good council wouldn't be on the front foot about this sort of thing and give an explanation up front as to, to what's going on. In fact, when the um, China basically started refusing taking Australian waste, or waste around the world in fact, uh, Casey uh, made a statement saying that it doesn't affect us. But uh, in the end we're seeing this increase. I've since received a very short explanation. I'm asking councillors to follow that up. If there's a reasonable e explanation, perhaps we can cop it. And if there's not, then there shouldn't be that sort of increase. Um, commit to Casey, it's a very nice placard here. And, you know, absolutely, we need the rail line extended out to Clyde. We need uh, more money spent on roads. But we were really uh, shocked and dismayed to see the figure of $257,000 uh, being put forward, allocated for this campaign. Um, and really, it's money that we're... There's no um, way of measuring whether we, we ever see that money, any value in that whatsoever. I've noted just before that um, there is a statement saying, well, this campaign 
has contributed $1.4 billion. Um, that's the claim that's been made and I've only received it, you know, as I came in here. And I, with all due respect, I, I put it to you that that really needs analysis. That is absolute nonsense. In, in the most literal sense, it would be nonsensical to believe that this little campaign has led uh, Liberal and Labor state politicians to wake up and suddenly plan $1.8 billion of infrastructure, road infrastructure. So, um, you know, the, the intent is fine, but you know, a grassroots campaign, <coughs> use of social media, you probably get a better outcome and it costs very little. So we really ask councillors to have a look at that figure. Uh, the China expenditure, the China Economic Partnership, uh, we notice in the budget $20,000 has been allocated and we say absolutely limit it to $20,000. We have seen $0.65 million allocated to China uh, over a two year period. And we're seeing very little uh, value for money. And one of the problems with it is there's no review process. When things don't uh, go the way that it's planned, for instance, the Lantern Festival was supposed to take place in the Bunjil Precinct. It was supposed to be essentially free for the Casey Council with in-kind support. Neither of those things are going to happen now. It's very unlikely it will be anywhere near here. We don't know where seconds, it will Brendan. be. 30, 30 uh, we don't know what the cost will be because now, <coughs> now the uh, events managers that we've approached have said, hey, on, Casey, put up a budget. But it just keeps going forward. And the reason it keeps going forward is there's no review process. So we end up with things being put on the agenda as urgent items when they should be available for the public. Sending people overseas as an urgent item really isn't on. We end up with people yep. Yep. walking thanks, out thanks of Brennan. these meetings thanks, rather uh, than your voting. Your time's up. Thank you very much. I'll just stay there for a moment. We may have just like to um, make some comments myself. Brendan, as, as you're aware, there is a state election coming up and a federal one. When we're not quite sure when that will be. Um, but I'm, I'm surprised that you... I'm just going to talk about Commit to Casey, uh, that the Resident and Ratepayers Association doesn't support it because everywhere I go and I speak and I talk about the duplication of the line from Dandenong to Clyde, people and the fixing up of our bus services and roads, <coughs> people stand and applaud because we have been falling behind for a long time. So I, I take your point. But the investment we've made um, today, and I make no apology for advocating to, to governments because there are elections on and there are votes at stake, depending on marginal seats, particularly Cranbourne and Narrowan North, that we can leverage off. Our job is to get the best outcomes for our residents. And we see this as a big opportunity with two elections coming up in the next 12 months um, or eight months uh, as, as a great opportunity. And council strong non-partisan uh, commit to Casey campaign so far, we, we, I've got written down here 1.4 billion invested in Casey in the 2018 Victorian budget. This includes a duplication of the Narry Warren Cranbourne Road between Thompson's Road and the South Gippsland Highway, which we've been advocating for for years and years. And that cost is 95 million alone, and we don't believe if we weren't getting all the residents' signatures on the <coughs> petitions that we're sending off to the relevant politicians that we would have got that commitment. And we're quite confident that closer to the election, with the infrastructure that we have fallen behind, with 160 people a week moving in, we are behind with infrastructure and with the rate capping environment, and we haven't put those up. We are challenged. It's not easy. It's difficult. I take your point. But we are going to advocate as hard as we can and involve the people. And from my experience and the experience of my colleagues, wherever we go saying, I'm going again to Parliament House tomorrow to talk to a number of ministers about what they can do out here. We are working overtime to try and get the best results with these two particular elections coming up. So we are committed. We're compared to the ask of $2.17 billion, Council's modest financial commitment to advocacy is likely to represent a significant return on ratepayers' investment. So I take your point about the money we've invested, but even already $95 million from that the sums add up to us that if we hadn't put in 250000 
We've already had uh, some money put aside for uh, research into the railway line coming from Dandy to Cranbourne. And as the election gets closer, um, I'm told by politicians, we will unveil more things to you for Casey, particularly the marginal seats, as we get closer because we don't want to talk about them now. So we are putting enormous pressure on politicians to give residents the best outcomes. And you talk to people, Clyde Cranbourne East is the fastest growing area in Australia. We don't want people who buy their dream home spending six, seven hours a day on the roads and their dream home turning into a nightmare because we're behind with infrastructure. And we are. And we need these roads fixed up all in one go. And this requires billions of dollars that we've applied for. And if we get what we're after, that's 18,000 local jobs, just like that overnight. So we believe the $250,000, and already the 39 we've got, and the f other four to five billion dollars that we're after, is a great investment. And I urge everybody to get behind it, because this is the opportunity, with two elections coming up, to really get the best outcomes for residents <coughs> in this city. Already we've seen a number of roads fixed up and the pressure's on the government, to get both governments, to do something to help the, the most populated municipality in Victoria and their marginal seats. And so we're leveraging off that in a bipartisan way. Again, I'm off to Parliament House, as I said, and I'll keep going and talking to politicians of all parties to get the best possible deal done for the people of Casey. And I know I speak on behalf of all my colleagues here, and I hope all the people in the gallery support this because this is billions of dollars at stake, and this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity with two elections coming up. They won't be held for another four years, and we're going for it. We're going to go for the biggest amount of money in Casey's history during these two elections. I'll thank you for your presentation, and I'll take your point, but I just picked up on that one because already we have got good dialogue going backwards and forwards. Again, I've got good dialogue happening tomorrow about some projects at Parliament House, and I will keep pushing along with my colleagues every inch of the way. So any, any other councillors wish to say something? Councillor Aziz? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and I congratulate you on your leadership and those comments, and uh, they're certainly absolutely, absolutely correct. Um, I just have a number of questions which were really uh, stimulated by uh, what Mr Brown has presented, and I wonder if you could allow me the liberty uh, to pursue those questions. Um, Mr Brown, you spoke about your submission um, pointing to a potential $1 million worth of savings in the budget. Yeah. I'm just wondering if you can enlighten council as to how you've arrived at that calculation. Okay, um, so uh, over two years, last year we uh, spoke out against the uh, China Economic uh, Partnership. So that's 0.65 million and the commit to Casey is 257,000. Okay, so uh, where's the rest of the 650-odd thousand worth of savings that you alluded to in your presentation? Assuming that the uh, 300,000 you've mentioned for Commit to Casey and China was actually wastage, which it's not, and I'll address that later, where's the other 650,000 odd that you alluded to in your presentation? Where does that come from? Uh, that, that's what's been allocated to China, the China no, no. Economic Partnership. Right. Yeah. Okay. So are you aware that Council has just finished an efficiency and effectiveness program which has in fact banked $15 million for the KCA rate payers across four years? Uh, no. Are you aware that as part of our smart cities efforts we've engaged uh, consultants to assist us in achieving better outcomes on our capital works program and they've applied a computer algorithm uh, to our expenditure which has further identified another $5 million worth of savings which we've actually embedded in the budget? Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of savings. Yep. But are you aware of what That's I've just mentioned? That specific $5 million? Right. Um, no, no, no. So we're basically going on the assumption that the 650000 which has been budgeted for for the China engagement strategy is regarded by yourself as wastage, and that's basically what you bring to the table in terms of identifying savings in the budget. Is that correct? Uh, we're saying there's a lot more savings. We're saying that million dollars is the tip of the iceberg. And well, no doubt uh, Ms. if we Ms. had the Ms. level of Mr. detail Brown, that you, you can have, say You can say whatever you like. I'm interested in evidence-based decision-making, so I'm interested in evidence and analysis and calculations that you may have actually t un undertaken to arrive at those figures because it's very easy for you to turn up here and throw around the mantra that this is the tip of the iceberg when in fact it's not because the city of Casey is one of the tightest managed councils in the state and you don't have to take my word for it. Just go and ask the Victorian Auditor-General that very 
very question and you'll be surprising yourself with the answer. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I have a number of other questions, uh, which again were inspired by the presentation that Mr. Brown has just made. I just want to talk about um, his conclusion that the money that we've actually invested in advocacy uh, is wasted, uh, given that the city of Casey has been known for a very long time to be the leading council in the state out of 79 on advocacy. Uh, Mr. Brown, are you, uh, do you recall um, the Stevenson's Road landfill? Yes, yes. Do you recall the sort of uh, damage or cost that that would have impacted on the ratepayers of Casey? Um, I believe it was probably around the $50 million mark, but mm. we've been asking and asking. I'm sorry, Mr. Brown, you've, you've, an, you've answered my question It'll specifically. You, you, so. you, you've answered my question, and the answer is it's not double. It was actually $42 million, and given the, um, the scant detail in your answer, you probably would not be aware that as a result of the City of Casey's advocacy, and very strong advocacy, I might say, we managed to secure $44 million out of two successive state governments, and wait for it, wait for it, of two different political persuasions, so one Labor, one Liberal. I believe the figures, Mr Mayor, were $18 million from one government and around $24 million from the other, so about $42 million, yep. to recover the cost of the, of the landfill, which then spared all of our ratepayers having to wear that pain for, for that disaster which was caused by VCAT. Are you aware of that? Yes, no. yes. It nearly sent the, uh, the city of Casey close to, to, well, not bankrupt, but now it took away a lot of their savings. And so what actually I see is happening is the state government did, in, in two, in two uh, separate uh, cases, contribute la large amounts, adding up to around $40 million. And I see payback for that is the state governments didn't contribute at all to Bunjil Place, apart from a small grant okay. to the library. That's a so, very, so that's very, very that, 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 that's a very interesting conclusion. And I don't believe that I have the time nor the inclination the, the to debate that. Thing, Mr. Like Brown, I haven't finished talking. I am an elected councillor and you're not. Uh -huh. And so I have the floor. <laughs> and unless the mayor... Floor, and we're going to wind Thank up, you. Councillor Aziz. Thank you. Thank, unless the mayor directs me otherwise, I have the floor, so I'd appreciate you're not interrupting because it is the fact that I'm actually elected by the people of Casey and you're not. You're just self-appointed. So let's just go to one final question and that is uh, in relation to uh, the China engagement strategy which you pointed as a waste. Are you aware of what we achieved in China in 2017 and 2018? Uh, I do have a quote from you that says uh, three businesses that were not part of the China trip but made links thereafter, did $22 million in property deals yeah. with Chinese counterparts. And so I really can, can ask you complete all the, the quote? Can you complete the quote? And in Tasmania. Can, the can, I, can I ask Mr. Br Mr. Mayor, I ask you to overrule him. I, I'm not interested in an editorial from him. Okay. I'm only interested in the facts. Can, can you give us a straight answer, question? Well, you're not answering my question with all due respect. Well, I, I read you, 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 You're speaking untruth and that's why I call your organization Hang on. I'm gonna bring it to a head. I'm sorry Mr. Mayor can I just say that that quote because I need to correct the record was actually made after the 2013 trip that I made on behalf of the city of Casey 2017 and 18 yielded the first ever global agreements between any city in the world and Mian Yang City and Duji Yang City which are basically bastions of technology and will help the city of Casey and the people of the city of Casey a great deal both economically and on our path to become a smart city. So with all due respect, Mr. Brown, I would really appreciate if your organization stops throwing around untruth. And this is why, and I, you want another quote from me? I called you previously the Casey lie, because I can't get a word of truth out of you. And that stands for also, by the way, losers and exile, because none of you have ever been able to win an election. Oh, End of story. Thank you. I'm going to pull things up there, because I don't want things to get to a personal level. But not, Brendan, not, but thank, no, you. thank you, Councillor. Thank you for your, is it Councillor Rosario, do you still want to ask Make a comment, Councillor Rosario. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, Mr. Brown, I just wanted to address recommendation four of your submission, which was about the um, the uh, waste charge increase of twenty eight dollars, which you say is a lot of money, and and uh, you know you'd like to see that reduced. This is an essential service about picking up rubbish, about recycling, and China means business when it's stopped. Uh, imports going in. Anything more than 0.05%, I think it was, um, 
essentially they've turned away entire shipments because it's just gone over a little bit. We have a contractor who has worked with council. We've got the best council officers in Victoria who have worked really hard, and we've got a $28 rise. Now, if we compare that to other councils, they're looking at some councils were going as high as 70 or more dollars per household. Even the <coughs> Municipal um, Association of Victoria CEO, Rob Spence, he was estimating around for every council maybe $50, $60 per household increase. So in actual fact, we've got a really great deal going and we have to be responsible with the way we do waste and the way we collect it as well. And if we were to reduce or, or not even to, uh, to raise that, then the question would be how many times in the month would you like us to pick up your bins? Would you like it weekly or would you like it every two weeks for your green bins, for, your, uh, for other bins as well? It, it's just the way it is. So I celebrate and I completely support our council officers who have done an amazing job to get it to where it is with, with that $28. If, if you got an amazing deal, I'd say well done. If you look at the recommendation, it's an either or. It's saying explain the 9.3% or reduce it to a 2.5% increase. So, so if you explain it and if you really believe you've got a good deal, as I said, we cop it. You know, no, no question there. I, I think the figures speak for themselves, and, and I know they do. Uh, and what I want to say is, is that we are getting a fantastic deal, and, and I ask you to go back and take a look at and compare to other councils as well, and I think you'll find the same thing. And you talk about wanting savings for the city of Casey. Our council officers have negotiated an amazing rate that has given us a lot of savings compared to other councils. So yeah. um, that's something that perhaps you could take back and have a look at. Yeah, there was an apparent contradiction that uh, a case, City of Casey spokesperson came out and said that the, the China decision won't influence us, uh, won't impact upon us. Um, and so I've got that quote in there. Um, so, um, but I will also point out the Stevenson's Road um, uh, scenario was was found to be partly City of Casey's uh, responsibility. Uh, point of order, Mr Mayor, no, relevance. No, I'll, I'll take yes. that. No, it yep. was a VCAT hearing. End of story. I'm, I'm, I've been all over this, OK? It's it's been been we're not going to go down that path it. anymore. We're going, we're going to hand over to Council Flannery. Go. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Brendan, look, look, I'd just like to thank you for coming. As you know, I was a ratepayers association president with, the, uh, with you on, on, on our group. Look. It's very hard to uh, come to council, stand up here to have uh, you know, evidence to uh, put to council. And um, you know, I, I congratulate you for having the courage to come here and do so. As I said, you know, unless we've got all the evidence in front of us, it's very hard to, uh, you know, to put up a to put up a, a submission and um, and, and know, know the, the full truth of what's going on within council. But as I said, at any time that you need to get information, you can come through any councillor. You can come through me, and we can go to the. Uh, what elected councillors or the uh, or the officers, and we can go to their departments and they they can discuss issues. We can have meetings, and you you can find out the basic facts uh, and and find out what's going on because you know we are an open council now. But um, any time you want to have a meeting, I'm happy to arrange it for you. And um, as I said, you know, you're not only are you a friend of mine, I haven't seen you for a while, but. Uh, I'd like to congratulate you for getting up here and have the courage to uh, put your point forward and, uh, you know, having a great debate with uh, my fellow ward councillor. And, um, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Flannery. We'll move to Councillor Jackson. Thank, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, thank you, Mr Mayor, and thank you very much for your presentation. I just want to touch on Councillor Rosario's point about the garbage charge, and it's been very much highlighted recently in Victoria as well. Um, council cannot charge any more than it costs us to deliver that service. Um, so the rate, the council have obviously done very well in ensuring the increase in cost is minimal, but council cannot charge any more than that garbage charge costs us. And we've seen that as a prime example in the Wodonga City Council recently, which is in the news, that had a problem because they did exactly that and you're not legislatively allowed to do that. So um, I congratulate the officers on keeping it low, uh, but Ms Mayor, I think it was very important to make that point that we can't charge the residents any more than that service actually costs us to deliver. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Councillor yeah, Cristani. Thank, thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you, Brendan, for coming to present. Um, we value our community in 
having a say, and that's why we've given a platform to submitters. Um, I, we may or may not agree on some of the data, and I think some of it's been corrected. And um, but I still value your freedom of speech and your right to, and I thank you for your interest in um, reviewing heavily the budget. Um, and um, yeah, I think it's important we have that that input. So thank you. Yep. Um, uh, last question, Councillor Aziz. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. It is actually a question to you, and it springs off uh, the comment that Councillor Cristani just made that uh, we value freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is, of course, a right, but it's also a responsibility. You've got to speak the truth. So I'm going to ask you this question, Mr. Mayor. Are you aware that the City of Monash was the only council in Victoria that managed to achieve an exemption from the Essential Services Commission of an additional some 3% above its rate cap to apply to its residents? Off the top of my head, no, Councillor Ziz. Okay, well, um, I believe, uh, Mr. Mayor, that this was a matter that was prevalent in the media, and the reason they managed to get that exemption is because of the additional garbage charge, which, as Councillor Jackson and Councillor Rosaria correctly identified, is very low in the city of Casey, thanks to the diligent and great work of the officers. So, Mr. Mayor, I'm puzzled, and this is a rhetorical question, and you may choose not to answer it, but what do the Residents and Ratepayers Association actually want? If we had gone the same path as the Monash Council and achieved the same increase in rates, we would have been screamed at, and yet because we were responsible and reduced the garbage charge and therefore avoided a rate application increase in the first place, we get no credit for that either. Are you getting the sense, Mr Mayor, that we can't possibly win with this mob? You don't have to answer I, that. Well, I will answer that. I think it's uh, a democracy and I thank you for your time. And this is the place to ask questions and some good information has been put forward. I think it's a very salient point that Council Jackson brought forward. One that I think we all need to be aware of in, in the city, that we are transparent. As Again, tonight, 100% of everything is, is here. And I, I value your time here. It's, it's not easy to get up and, and speak, and it's difficult to know evidence off the top of your head when you're asked questions, but we value your contribution. And, and I take up uh, Councillor Flannery's uh, offer that any time you want to work with the City of Casey, we're more, more than happy for councillors and officers to sit down I know you said before you didn't get answers, but I can assure you if you go through the councils, we'll sit down with you and the books are open for you to look at. We're totally transparent. You can come and look at any books. We've Mr Davis over here, Head of Finance, more than happy to show you what, what we've got, where it was spent, why this was raised to that, any question you like. Um, look, thank you very much. And I just thank everyone for their politeness, bar one person. Um, uh, uh, I really, no, I really do find it offensive the, the way you, you've spoken to me, Councillor Aziz. We're the only organisation that you've called out as a liar. And I'm not actually aware of any facts that you and I are actually disagreeing on. So I'm not sure where the okay. point of lie, but I don't want to take up people's everything. time. Yep. I've had I'll, I'll polite take your point. conversations I'll take, with I'll take people your point, I disagree Brendan. with. I'll take your point. Thank Submissions you. are over. Thank you very much. Um, Brendan, would you give, thank Brendan for his presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Brendan. And I'll just go back because we had some people who were absent before. I just want to make sure that they haven't arrived um, later. Um, Mr. G. Hush Prasad, has they come? And we had Mr. James Marshall. Has James arrived? And we had Miss Angela Davies. Has Angela arrived? No? Then I'll conclude 6.1 by saying uh, I want to thank all of our people who stood up tonight and, and spoke. It's been good, open discussion. And the city of Casey has an ambitious vision of creating Australia's most livable city. In order to achieve that vision, strategic long-term planning is required to ensure that we can deliver the services and infrastructure that our growing community needs. And as I explained before, it isn't easy, it is hard. It, they're tough challenges that we face given the number of people coming in in a rate-capped environment which we've um, gone along with and, and worked, uh, squeezed every dollar we can to get the biggest bang for our buck in every way, shape and form. Oh, can I have a second? Thanks, Councillor Jackson. <laughs> My apologies. 
For 28 days, a draft suite of corporate planning documents were available for the community to review and comment, including the revised 2017 to 2021 council plan and the 2018 to 19 budget. All of the documents on public exhibition were the result of many months of work and are a testament to the strong collaboration and engagement between the community, councillors and staff. Council's community engagement initiatives saw around 2,400 visits to the Casey's Conversations with 470 documents downloaded. A total of 14 submissions were received from the community during this period and a number of those respondents have nominated to be heard here at our council meeting this evening. Having received and considered the submissions on the revised council plan, annual action plan, the budget and fees and charges, these documents will now be updated as applicable prior to the adoption by council at a special council meeting on Tuesday the 26th of June 2018. So I thank everyone for their submissions tonight. Councillor Smith, before I close off on 6.1, you have something to say? Uh, Mr Mayor, I'd ask you as a mover and seconder to, um, a seconder to consider an amendment, a slight amendment, just to some wording, um, and a, a procedural point if Mr Dalton or someone might like to answer. When we adopt this motion as put, we adopt everything that's in the attachments, is that correct? Because there's, so, there there's a point in the, in the attachment that I'm really disappointed in and I want to have that removed, but, but I need to know, is... By removing that, are we changing? Sorry, are we able? By moving this motion, are we accepting that everything in attachment A is going to be there? That's, that's now, I three, Mr. Mayor. I think what council's doing is is receiving the presentations, yep. not necessarily acknowledging that all the content has the support of council. It's receiving the the budget submissions. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll tell you what the part is I don't like, and then maybe you can decide whether okay. we don't we don't need to do it. Uh, it's under the submission about the, for the Alliance for Gambling, and it talks about the, the, the request for 25k, um, and we've got a, a sentence that says it's not proposed to include in funding. It's the, it's the paragraph underneath that I really am um, not happy with at all. I find that the, 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 having that inserted there um, by officers, I'm not sure, maybe with the best of intention, but I, I'm not going to be... Um, accept this if that is the way council and the officers are going to deal with it. Uh, to suggest that we're going to handball the request to that fund, which has been hard fought by, for by the community, um, is, I think, is outrageous. So, Mr Mayor, that, if I can read it, it says, however, this funding request will be referred to a process that is established for the distribution of an annual community contribution for the Lindbrook Hotel that is expected to result from a recent amendment to the hotel's licence to operate 55 electronic gaming <laughs> machines. We're saying we're not going to put the 25,000 in to join this alliance, but maybe we could take the 25,000 out of that funding allocation. That's how I read it. Now, it may not be the case, but I, I, I'm really disappointed that that's there and I, I can't adopt, I can't support this motion while that sits in that amendment. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Uh, very good point. The CEO and I had a good long chat about this this afternoon and uh, he has asked to elaborate on our discussions. Yes, sir. Through Mr Mayor, when Council comes to adopt the budget next Tuesday evening, it will then consider how it wishes to deal with the submissions that have been made and it won't be making any decisions about, the, about um, if the Alliance... Tonight there's no decision being made about... Um, whether there's funding for the alliance and what that source of funding may be. It was just a suggestion that's been raised, but it's not a commitment at all that council will be, uh, will be signing off on tonight if it receives the submissions. So, Mr Mayor, if I could just add, on behalf of all the people in Lindbrook and associated organisations that have fought for what we have received, um, I think they'd be outraged to think that council would even bring this up ever again. So that's... That's my point, and if, yep. if I don't need to move an amendment, I'll, I'll No, you don't need to move an amendment, and, and we look forward to having that discussion cool. with you. So that's 6.1. Uh, are there any, any dissent on 6.1? Then that is carried. Thank you. Uh, we'll move now to item 6.4, Councillor Cristani. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and um, I wish to move this in my name. Seconded by Councillor Smith. Thank you. I just want to first of all start off by thanking um, Kate, Michelle and Alison for your work. This was a long process and a lot of work involved in, with your team. Uh, this wasn't the only thing you're working on but it, this is an important one. 
uh, as one of the members and co-chair of the inclusion committee uh, with Councillor Smith and other members, Councillor Stapleton, um, I just want to say thank you for your work. Um, and you listened to us and you've listened to the community and it's reflected in this document. I will be presenting on the segment about the Aboriginal Committee, so I'll just refer to these, um, these notes. Thank you very much for preparing um, the officer who has to help me present this. The suite of frameworks have been designed to re respond to the needs of particular population groups who reside in the city of Casey. Each framework establishes council's intent and commitment to these groups of people, as well as boundaries for the work for council and its partners in these areas moving forward. The suite of fra frameworks promote respect for all individuals in their personal beliefs, identity and choice of expression aligned with legislation. The frameworks apply a non-judgmental approach to everyone. For Casey to be an inclusive place, we need to foster respect and acknowledge that everyone has the right and choice to express their personal beliefs and identity in ways that do not impinge on the rights of others. One of the frameworks is the Aboriginal Strategic Framework 2018 to 2021. This framework recognises the importance of our First Nation people to the city of Casey. Casey has the third highest number of Aboriginal people in metropolitan Melbourne. The Aboriginal Strategic Framework takes a holistic approach and is built on the foundation of self-determination moving us toward unity. The outcome or goal of the framework is to create an empowered Aboriginal community that participates in decisions that affect their economic, social and cultural well-being and have control of their own future. The framework focuses on the city of Casey, the Aboriginal community and the Casey-wide community, making a difference by creating stronger relationships, providing opportunities for involvement in decision-making processes, promoting mutual respect for and connection between Aboriginal culture and the community. This framework builds on the investment by, made by the community and council into the aspirations and vision of the gathering place, a place driven by the needs of the local community to support community across a range of stages in their lives. And what a success the Ad Aboriginal Gathering Place has been and will continue to be. Uh, I look forward to seeing um, a committed funding that will continue their, their thriving and their surviving. And uh, I do like the fact that we've embraced, um, truly embraced unity with the Aboriginal community and that I hope that this is a huge step toward them becoming, feeling more inclusive and being at the forefront of, of our Australian community. Thank you. Um, I'll pass it on so to think, Councillor Smith. Thank you. Sorry. Ladies, please stay oh, there. there. There's yes, more. Yes, there's I just, I just want to ask, <laughs> Josh, how's it going? You're taking it all in? Good. There's more to come on this point. Because, Josh, we're going to ask you questions. Councillor Smith. Um, thank, you. thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm a recent member of the Access and Inclusion Committee and I'm really pleased and, and, um, and particularly three officers standing before us, you know, their passion for this and they're, um, they're keeping me involved and keeping me abreast of things as fantastic as I'm hoping and I'm sure they're doing with other councillors on the committee. So I'm really excited to speak to you tonight about a suite of strategic frameworks which enable council to create an inclusive, safe and connected community. And in our council plan, objective two is to create an inclusive, safe and connected community. So it's really important that we... Um, that Tonight we recognise that you know, we're, we're making a big inroads into, into our council plan by adopting this. The suite consists of three strategic frameworks, being the Aboriginal Strategic Framework, to 2018 to 21, inclusive Casey Strategic, say that with a... <laughs> I, won't, I won't give my normal joke, that might be a bit off. Uh, inclusive Casey Strategic Framework, 2018 to 2021, and Accessibility Framework for Action, 2018 to 2021. Extensive community stakeholder and council engagement was undertaken in, to develop the suite of strategic frameworks. Over 1,200 individuals participated directly in the development of the frameworks and a further 4,500 people involved in broader community consultations, including Casey Next, which many of us, of course, were involved in, in gathering that, that information. Uh, other specific engagement activities have also been undertaken for each framework. There's a raft of legislation that pertains to each of the areas that the suite of frameworks cover, and all three frameworks have carefully considered the legislative obligations of Council in these areas. 
adoption and implementation of the suite of strategic frameworks. We must change the wording to help me out in the future. Um, we'll SFs. SFs. We'll ensure that the council is able to meet its obligations. And I want to highlight the inclusive Casey strategic framework 2018-21. Well, I think it's the last time I have to say it. As I have portfolio responsibility for the community harmony very proudly. The framework sets out the City of Casey's aspirations for a more inclusive Casey and is a roadmap which will guide Council with our partners on our journey to becoming a more inclusive place. Five goals of the Casey SF <laughs> are to, number one, celebrate Casey's diversity. Yeah, we are a fantastically diverse community and it's, it's, a, it's, it's such an honour and privilege to go to the events that recognise that diversity and, and hopefully we'll do more and more in the future. Increase awareness and understanding to pr promote inclusion. Build leadership for a more inclusive Casey. Increase partnership and engagement. Increase the diversity of the workforce. And Mr Mayor, can I just um, talk about very quickly, um, on Saturday morning, of course, you were there, Council Flannery was there at the Inclusive Casey Community Gathering. As an example of how we, we network with the community, we gain uh, information and their ideas, uh, and at the end of it, we get together and we celebrate that what the achievements were, and that's what Saturday morning was, and it was a great honour to be here to witness the, the performances and, and listen to the, um, the results of the workshop where the, the different tables that were here on the day contributed. There was even a song, those of you who know Brian Milgate, he's no voice candidate, but he, he wrote a song based on the Vegemite song, I think it was, um, and, and he sang it twice which was a bit dangerous. I told him, you know, we'll contact him, don't, wait, don't call us. But the passion of that group, including Brian but others, uh, in the poetry and in the songs and other things that were um, written that day was just uh, fantastic and on I was honoured to be part of it. So, and congratulations to our officers who put it together. It was just a great, great morning. Thank you, Councillor Smith. I'll hand over to Councillor Stapleton. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And could I too acknowledge our wonderful council officers. The work you have done and are doing is to be admired and, um, and we thank you sincerely. And I too am a proud member of the Access and Inclusion Advisory Committee. Um, recently rejoined. I was on it for a number of years in the past um, and um, am really proud of the work that is being done on that. Uh, what I'd like to talk about to my fellow councillors is accessibility. Um, and would like to start by saying this strong go governance has been the key development of the suite of frameworks. The Access and Inclusion Advisory Committee have overseen the development and provided strategic advice and direction in the development of the frameworks at all stages. Membership of the Access and Inclusion Advisory Committee includes four elected councillors and 12 community representatives. The councillors being, as uh, Councillor Cristani mentioned, Councillor Wayne Smith, Councillor Rosalie Cristani, Councillor Millie Gillich and myself. As a long-standing supporter over the years of the Access and Inclusion Advisory Committee, I'm so pleased to see the development of the Accessibility Framework for, um, for action 2018-2021, no response, never mind, um, with a, a year one action plan as part of the suite. This framework responds to, 14, 000, to the 14,144 people living in Casey with a disability, a population that has grown by 19% since 2011 and is, it, and is expected to increase over the coming years. This framework sets out council's commitment to making a Casey, sorry, to making the Casey municipality more accessible for people with a disability. The framework aims to enable people with a disability to achieve their full potential and live a fulfilling and productive life. And I don't think they, uh, I, I just think they deserve all that and um, so much of that and so much more. The three goals of the Accessibility Framework for Action are, one, create an accessible Casey for people with a disability, Yay. two, promote inclusion and participation for people with a disability, and three, increase leadership and employment opportunities for people with a disability. By giving them the rights of everyone else, it just sometimes takes a little bit of extra effort and a different way of approaching it in order to achieve that. And finally, this accessibility framework for action as part of a suite of frameworks will enable us to create an inclusive, safe and connected community. And that is exactly what we're striving towards and I think we're, we've definitely nailed it in this case. So um, to our officers, to Mr Coldham, 
I would like to say a very big thank you um, to our acting CEO, Mr Dalton, and um, to the mayor and councillors. Well done on this absolutely fantastic outcome, and here's to a, a more inclusive Casey into the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stapleton. Um, Councillor Flannery, I know you haven't got dissent, so it is a question, isn't it? Yeah, just in a way. Uh, thank you through you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I'd just like to say to Michelle, uh, I was here on Saturday for um, the community uh, meeting, the inclusive community green meeting, and um, I'd like to, I, I was uh, very heartwarmed by having a look for the first time that we actually had over in that side of the uh, council with two signers for the deaf, and that brought them into the, uh, in, into the sway of uh, learning what we were doing and ha having an input in uh, our decision making, and uh, I take my hats off to you for that, uh, for, br for bringing them in, bringing them into council and uh, make him a part of uh, the inclusiveness of our city and what we're uh, striving for. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Flannery. Um, when you say hat off, I've never seen you wear one. <laughs> but seriously, uh, to Councillor Cristani, Councillor uh, Gillich, Councillor Smith, Councillor Stabham, well done on, on, on the work, and also to Kate, Michelle and Alison, uh, acting CEO and all the councillors and officers, everyone. It, okay. it is all about inclusion, and I was here on Saturday morning as well, so well done to the team. And a uh, big round of applause for our three ladies out there. Um, is there any dissent on the matter? That is carried. Thank you. We'll move on to item 6.11. Councillor Aziz, retired Victrack Trams. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd like to move that recommendation in my name with an additional dot point. And that is... Um, uh, I think possibly under one, so the two becomes three and then there's a new two. That is, um, the council investigate the possibility of acquiring an additional tram, uh, comma, possibly through its private public partnership policy. Comma, for placement at Casey Fields, comma, to facilitate the all-important human and Melbourne cultural activity coffee. of drinking coffee um, at that venue, comma, which is regarded as the third premier sporting facility in the state of Victoria. Um, Mr Mayor, I add for that, I add that and I'll wait for a second though. Is it, is it just drinking coffee or having cake and oh, things? It's, it's more than that. I was just being a little All bit right, sort I'll of facetious. Let it ride. But Seconder, Council Stableton, thank you. Um, so, uh, Mr Mayor, as we know, uh, the report I think did explore that, but there were some significant cost prohibitions in having that uh, uh, take place. However, I think what we need to do is go all out and explore all possibilities of basically react creating a cafe-like structure in Casey Fields and what a, you know, is there a better way to do this than to actually have an iconic Melbourne tram uh, sitting in that facility acting as a cafe and a meeting point for people. Needless to say, Mr Mayor, it will create an opportunity for a KC resident perhaps to acquire a new business. It will certainly increase the visitation numbers to KC Fields because that is certainly one facility that is lacking in that magnificent sporting precinct and that is a cafe-like environment where people can gather around on a weekday or a weekend and, and socialise and, and certainly drink coffee and, and, and also you know, have morning, afternoon tea and lunch. Um, and it will increase our uh, take-up of uh, this very exciting proposal of deploying these iconic trams uh, throughout Melbourne. So even though the cost to council might be prohibitive, exploring further opportunities of actually allowing that to happen without any cost to the ratepayers is certainly a worthwhile exercise, given the importance of both the iconic image but as well as the, as well as the functionality and, um, and, and, and what that will do for Casey Fields. Um, I say the third most premier sporting facility in the state, and I'm not exaggerating. We know that the MCG holds great prominence in the heart of every Victorian. 
We also know that Albert Park is a magnificent uh, sporting precinct, but then beyond that I would challenge uh, anyone to come up with a, a facility that is as expansive, as, as uh, inclusive and as, as grandeur as, as Casey Fields is. So we need to give Casey Fields every opportunity to um, complete its uh, sporting and cultural attraction to people and I think having one, one of those trams down there uh, certainly achieves that as well as the other benefits that I've mentioned earlier, Mr. Mayor. So I seek the support of the Chamber. Thank you, Councillor Aziz. Uh, is there any. You would like Councillor Stablet? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I do have a question, um, and that's to, um, to, to Councillor Aziz. If, he, if we are able to move forward in this direction, which is as I mentioned, something I raised um, last fortnight. I wondered if we could include Liddy's Place in on this. If there's a possibility of us exploring this for Casey Fields, why not Liddy's Place? Because that needs a cafe more than just as, just as much. And could I please, Mr Mayor, could I please thank the council officers because I've worked closely with them. We put in 10 requests and did they do some enormous work. Callum, thank you very much, Mr Paddy. Thank you very much for um, the hard work you did and, and for touching base with absolutely everyone and just making sure that um, if they weren't sure, if you could help them any further and some of the great outcomes that we've got. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stapleton. Uh, Councillor Cristani, first. Oh, thank, thank you, oh, Mr sorry. Mayor. Oh, did you get an answer? Or? I beg your pardon? You'd still like to answer. Yeah. Oh, you want to answer the question? Sorry. Yep. Okay, so then we'll come back, Councillor Cristani. Sorry. Uh, Mr Mayor, I think that's a great suggestion and I'm happy to uh, support uh, Councillor Stapleton's recommendation. I think that it's a very meritorious recommendation and I ask with your indulgence and leave of the Chamber if I could perhaps amend the second point and uh, also make it less frivolous uh, than my earlier attempt. So if I could actually suggest that um, at Casey Fields and uh, leave his place. Please, yep. L-O-double-V-I. Yep. 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 Um, and I, I, I just to, instead of saying the all important human and Melbourne cultural activity of drinking coffee, can I just say to provide for um, a cafe um, at those venues rather than at that venue? Sounds a lot better, doesn't it? You are a very conservative person, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, and I'm always happy to uh, please you in that regard. So, yes, um, so yeah, if we could say that uh, at those venues. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, may I? Um, we're just going to look at the grammar here. I'm sorry. Uh, we're just Mr. worried about the Mr. comma. Mayor, worried about the comma after venues. Yeah, I, I've picked that up. And can I say, if we can actually transpose that sentence that talks about the premier sporting facility, and make that after Casey Fields. So at Casey Fields, which is regarded as the third premier sporting facility in the state of Victoria, um, and at Livy's Place which is a pioneering regional facility uh, which provides for um, engagement of our all abilities residents um, yeah, in, in recreation, I guess. Is, is in, in city life, I think, city life, in playing and city life, yes. So if we could add that in relation to Livis Place, I think that provides completeness to the paragraph. Do that again. Okay, so uh, <laughs> but, but my old rule of thumb was ne never more than 26 words in a sentence, so just a bit worried. Have we, have uh, so we got too many words? After Victoria, if we could put a comma and say, and at Livy's place, which is regarded <coughs> as uh, a pioneering uh, all abilities playground. Uh, full stop, uh, the tram is to be deployed uh, to provide cafes at those venues. Cafes. You are happy with that now? Oh, yeah. I beg your pardon? Yep. Happy? Thank you. So can I have leave of council for that? That's good. Councillor Cristani. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Ziz and Councillor Stapleton and uh, Callum for your work on this. I did hear this item at Casey Fields uh, Advisory Committee um, and I know that there's some reservation about having it at Casey Fields and I understood some of the reasoning. 
Um, and so I, I like the fact that this is investigating. It's not saying it's going to happen <coughs> because I want to give, um, not saying it shouldn't happen either. I'm just saying let's give it every opportunity to look at the, you know, the feasibility of this. Um, I like, I'm thinking as a layman myself about looking at there would be heavy costs and looking at perhaps we need to bring this up to the same sort of stage level as, you know, the modern the modern facility uh, precinct that is Casey Field. So if we were to consider it, I'm hoping there would be a nice polished finish because this you're talking about quite an antiquated, which is a heritage, uh, mind you. Yes, of course, we want to maintain the heritage and look at the bringing in the arts and that sort of thing. Um, but also the feasibility of having uh, a contractor be there and, and look at it where there's enough, I'm sure there is at times. So, um, yeah, but I do support uh, the Livy's Place and Casey Fields, um, the idea, but obviously there's a heavy amount of work to go into and I just want to respect that about your work. And I know it was presented to the committee, so we just want to be mindful of community input as well and whether there's a consideration that we also go out to the public to ask them, do they want them to have at those two places as well, which I'm sure Councillor Stapleton has had some of that. for that. <laughs> yeah. We haven't got time okay. for that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cristani. Councillor says you'd like to respond to that? Yeah, uh, not respond, but as the uh, acting chief executive was so heavily focused on grammar, I just thought I'd follow in his footsteps and correct uh, that we will probably need to change it to say an additional two trams rather than an additional tram. Uh, just to be perfectly um, clear that the facilities will not be sharing a tram. I missed it, it too. It, it can't go I, anywhere. I missed it too, so, but, so don't worry. We both missed it. Good pick up. Thank you. So, uh, is there any dissent on any other questions or dissent? Then that is carried. Thank you. We move along to 6.12 Pound Road School Crossing, Council Rosario. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to move that in my name, please. And seconded by Councillor Smith. Uh, thank you, Councillor Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's a very quick one just to thank uh, Ms. Bell and the team for their rapid response to the uh, concerns that uh, I had raised in a motion, um, urgent item of business uh, a few weeks back. And uh, the conversations and the discussions and the research that's gone into it in a very short amount of time has produced uh, results already, understanding the nature of what I had raised, which was the uh, visibility issue, as well as uh, speed and, and people not being able to see over the rise of, uh, of near the crossing that we discussed. So uh, what I wanted to say was well done and also for partnering with uh, Vic Roads and getting a result so quickly from them as well because it is their road, uh, I thought was very impressive. So um, uh, it's great to see when things work out well and uh, even though these, uh, these measures here are, are small, they're going to make a big difference. Uh, until we can get the pedestrian crossing in, which is signalised. Uh, I do point out one thing, and I, and I hope that Vic Roads will take it on board um, with regards to the speed, because I believe it was reported in the newspaper at Star News that um, Vic Roads has said the speed on um, Pound Road in that stretch especially it was relevant in, and, and appropriate. But uh, given that we have visibility issues such as a rise and you can't see cars over it, which is what the auditor had found, um, I would hope that they would reconsider... <coughs> Uh, speed limits along that stretch of road, uh, at minimum that part, just to make sure that when people are rising and coming over that they're not running into the back of somebody else's car or a pedestrian or whatever else. But otherwise, fantastic result. Well done. Please pass my thanks on to the team. Will, thank you. Thank you, thank you Councillor Rosario. Are there any questions or dissent on the matter? Then that is carried. Thank you. <coughs> we move to 6.13. Um, Councillor Smith. Uh, Mr Mayor, moving to recommendation page 66. Seconded by Councillor Rosario. Um, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, thank you to the officers for the report. It's, um, it is very good, and I like the options. Uh, there are advantages with both A and B, but I accept that A is the probably the more palatable one. Uh, one of the concerns that councillors will, had at the time of considering taking this on was the potential cost and workload of us having a panel, I think this is a good compromise. Let's do the panel, let's keep it, um, let's use our existing expertise because we have expertise on our community members, we have expertise on our staff in running a panel, but we'll do it once a year instead of four. I think that's um, a perfectly <coughs> good compromise. Um, every cent that we're going to distribute is a bonus on what we had and what we potentially could have had. So. So I'm, I'm happy that there might potentially be some less, less um, successful um, re recipients of the funding, but who knows, may not be, but 
but I, I accept that, that that probably is a small cost in relation to getting the funding and have it available to the community. So if you could pass back to your offices, and I know, you know there were times when I don't think we agreed on, on the, the concept of it, but I think we have come up with a good compromise and it is definitely a win for the Lynbrook community. So thank you for that. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Are there any questions or dissent? Councillor Jackson, dissent or question? Councillor Rosario, no. dissent? Oh. Rosalie, Rosalie. Tristani, <laughs> any question or dissent on the matter? Dissent. Dissent. Would you like to speak? To oh, no, I've got to come back over here. Um, Councillor Rosario, you seconded that. Do you wish to speak now or have you like to speak oh. later? I'll reserve until I hear what's happening. Okay, come back to Councillor Cristani. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for your work, and I want to be respectful of that. And uh, I want to also be mindful of the office or the councillors of that area. I'm being consistent on this. Um, if I could vote for point one and leave it at that, I would. But I, I must dissent to be consistent with my previous standing on this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cristani. Councillor Jackson, question or dissent? Dissent. Um, Councillor Rosario, are you happy to reserve your rights still? <coughs> Do you wish to speak now? We have more dissent. Oh, we have more. Oh, you're speaking hey. to you? Oh, yeah. I'll be quick. Okay. Councillor Jackson is, has dissented to the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And I'll be very brief, Mr Mayor. Um, as I said last time when this issue came up at Council and I dissented <coughs> then, it would be inconsistent for me not to dissent this time. It's not about delivering these funds to the community. It's not about ensuring that we provide these funds to the community. I think they, the community should have these funds and that's what it was designed to do. Ms Mayor, my dissent is purely based on the risk factor and strategic factor and factors, Ms Mayor, in terms of legality as well. I know we've overcome that, Mr Mayor, but I've got a big concern about Council delving into roles which it should not be in, given our tight budgetary stance, Ms Mayor. And I'll also make the point that, you know, the VC GLR sort of asked Council to opt in, um, opt in to help manage these funds. Ms Mayor, we see <coughs> time, which is a state organ government organisation, Ms Mayor, and I'll make this point, Ms Mayor, we see time and time again government, state or federal, passing the buck onto Council to get something for us to do and for our cost to do it, Mr Mayor. And, you know, if that authority or body wanted to do that, um, they should go to the minister and change the legislation to ensure there's a better process, Mr Mayor. It's not something I think Council should be involved in. Thank you, Councillor Jackson, for your opinion. Are there any more questions or dissent on the matter? Then, Councillor Rosario, you as second to have the right to speak. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I'll be brief with this. Uh, look, I appreciate the concerns of my fellow councillors and, and I acknowledge it as well. Uh, my only point here, Mr Mayor, is that uh, the last uh, item that we raised that was uh, successfully uh, passed at Council. Uh, that one has already specified that we've agreed to take on this responsibility. What we're looking at today, Mr Mayor, is how we're going to execute our uh, responsibility to what we have accepted. So uh, I ask for my fellow councillors' support on this because uh, now we need a framework and, and I believe that we have, and, and I agree with Councillor Smith, it's a really good solution that you've come up with and I really appreciate it on behalf of River Gum as well. Uh, and um, now is the time for us to move this to get that plan going and to put together the, uh, the panel that will be able to benefit the community in the long run. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rosario. So what you're saying, Councillor Rosario, is the decision's already been made and it's a matter of working out the strategy of how it works. Okay, Councillor Smith, would you like to wrap up, please? Very quick, thank you. Um, to the Council's dissent, I get it completely. Um, in, in to be consistent, you have to do that. So, um, um, Mr. Jackson, Councillor Jackson, is he as consistent like that in his daytime professional? I'm not sure. Um, uh, we, we, I, won't, we won't get into. I had to have a lawyer, uh, had to have a lawyer dig. Nearly, nearly a point of order. Nearly. <laughs> nearly, nearly. <laughs> you the <laughs> <laughs> um, no, look, uh, as I said, I do understand the inconsistency. I've, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of poker machines. I think the total input of my cash in <coughs> poker machines in the last 10 years is probably zero. I can't, I can't even think of a time when I have. So, uh, so I'm not a supporter of them, but they are reality. We have to live with them. I think the, the alternative to this motion is that the community had a strong chance of continuing to miss out on the distribution of that fund, those funds. Um, the, the history of this is that the, the, um, the, the funds 
which were supposed to be going to the community haven't been going in the way they should have been and to the amount. And I suppose that's why that organisation did step in and make a decision to give the council the option to control it, which on the basis of things, no, it's not our business and it's not, it is possibly risky. But in the end, if we hadn't done that, the community might, consider, might strongly, I would believe, still be missing out. So, um, and, and the community out there who are supporting what council's doing on this, they're against pokies too. They're, they're, so they're, they're, they're not thinking that us doing this is any sign of support for pokies. So that's why it's important that point one is, is there and we all agree with that. So, so I thank councillors for their consideration of this and I, I hope it'll be passed. I do get the dissent, but I'm hoping that that's the only dissent we get. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Having wrapped up, I'll put the recommendation that's before us to the council. All those in favour of the recommendation? Two, three, four. Those against? Sorry, can I just recount? Can you please put your hand clearly in the air? Those for the recommendation? Two. Those against? No, it's 5-4. Yeah, it's 5-4. It's 5-4. That is carried. A division has been called. All those in favour of the recommendation, please stand. <coughs> Councillor Smith, Rosario, Stapledon, Aziz, Ablett. Those against, please stand. Councillor Flannery, Councillor Jackson, Councillor Cristani, Councillor Gillich. Thank you. That is carried. Uh, we move to 6.16, commemorative naming. Um, Councillor Smith and Councillor Cristani was going to second it. Uh, Mr Mayor, I'm, uh, I will recommend, uh, put the recommendation on page 82 to the Council. And you, your secondary is Councillor Cristani. Um, yeah, it's with a lot of sadness that we do this because it's coming up to 12 months since um, former councillor and mayor uh, Morland, Mick Morland passed away in that tragic accident. Um, it council from from that very moment uh, said that we would do something in in terms of recognition of his years of service, not just to council. He was on. I was on, he and I got elected to Casey Council at the same time, 21 years ago. Um, he had a, a short spell off, but he then came back on, and of course in the last few years hadn't been, hadn't been on either. Um, but he'd had a considerable and successful history in local government, uh, but not only on Casey Council, but at the City of Berwick Council. I think he was Deputy Mayor in the last year of the City of Berwick, I think, or the second last year. Um, but also, he's, in, he's been a, involved in the community for a long time through his sporting interest and other interests such as Rotary and, um, and through his business. So uh, he's certainly well known. He was obviously much loved. We all know how, how much that he, he was loved by the community. Um, out of respect for Mick, we, we have consulted his family. Um, a lot of discussion has, I can assure members of the community that a lot of discussion was had by council to come up with a proposal, come up with a proposal that we could agree to, come up to a proposal that was fitting. Uh, and in the end, it had to be a proposal because we believed it was important. It had to be a proposal that was um, acceptable to the family because in the, in the long run, it's about honouring his memory and, and they are the remaining people, um, uh, the survivors, and we need to consider their wishes as well. Um, I have no doubt that what we're proposing would be an immense uh, honour for Mick. He would be pretty chuffed. I can imagine him standing there and um, his big grin playing with his whiskers and saying how, how, what, you know, how important and how good that was. So, um, and I'm really pleased that we're not removing the name of Pioneers Park completely. The, there will be a section of the park that will be still um, having the named pioneers in there because again I was around there's a few around this table we were here at the time that the pioneers park was established and we all know the reasons uh, well, certainly then and I hope we people know now why it was called pioneers park there is a business there a very successful cafe running there that has pioneers in the name so we were, we were careful that we didn't want to affect and um, underwrite that so we, we think what we've come up with is, is a good alternative. And we'll go through the process now of uh, advertising 
that that's what our intention is to call it the Mick Morland Reserve, uh, bearing in mind that the playground will become the Pioneers Playground, I believe. I can't think of the section there, but I'm sure that's what it says. <coughs> and it'll come back to council for further consideration, but um, I hope the community embraces it uh, in the spirit that we offer it, that we offer it as a memorial to a, a, a good friend of all of us and a good friend of this city and a very loyal past councillor. Is there any, before I can be, any questions or dissent on the matter? Then are uh, you aware from Councillor Cristani? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Smith, for those um, fitting words and uh, snapshot of what we're considering tonight. Thank you, Mr. Gilleran, for your work on this. And uh, this is such an important um, consideration, and I know that um, ca former Mayor and Councillor Morlan, uh, Mick Morlan, is um, so well known in Berwick. He was a jewel of Berwick, and to name a jewel uh, of Berwick as such of, uh, as this reserve after him is so fitting. Um, I know if Councillor Saray was here tonight, she would be standing here um, in tears probably, oh. recounting how uh, Mick was such an important part and how he, um, he contributed to the lives of so many. Um, and he was quick to help. He was, uh, he, I remember him saying to me that when he was first elected, he thought he was something special. And then he said, three months later, he just realised he was just a servant of the people. And he said, always remember that, Count uh, Rosalie. And he said, always remember that, that we are just servants of the people. We are to, to remain humble like that. There were so many words of advice that Mick um, gave. And I'll never forget the many stories he told. And he told them so many times. I don't think we'll ever forget them. Um, but he often would not let us forget that that Richmond Tigers was to be remembered as well. And um, he often said that uh, they were always going to be uh, the West Coast Eagles, which is my team. But that's not the case uh, this time. Um, they're, they're, but uh, we just, uh, every time I look at Sea Tigers, I think of Mick. And um, he'll always remain in our hearts. And I hope, look, certainly the community will have an input into this. And uh, I think they'll help, they'll understand that this is important to us to, to look at this and um, I know that it will resonate with them. We we'll look forward to hearing what they have to say. And, um, but yeah, I, I support this wholeheartedly. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cristani. Um, Councillor Rosario, do you have an, are you aware, do you? Yeah. Very quick, are you aware, Mr. Mayor? Um, Sunday, that's one year, so sort of June 24th. Um, uh, and uh, you know, I, I think we're doing the right thing here by the family and by mixed memory. And uh, look, I, I trade the whole naming thing to get the man back. But uh, this is the best that we can do, and I think it will, uh, it's, it's good to honour him this way. So, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Rosario. Councillor Aziz? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I just want to join um, all my colleagues in expressing every support for this proposal. I think it's befitting that um, Mick, in many ways, was a pioneer of so many things in our city, and to have Pioneers Park associated with his eternal memory is, is absolutely wonderful. I had the, um, the dubious uh, situation, Mr Mayor, of actually being the Mayor of the Day at the time and I, still, I will never forget getting that phone call at 1.25 in the morning uh, from Councillor Saray to advise of what had happened to Mick and um, that moment uh, will never um, relieve me of its impact and I think I made a comment back then that um, the city might have lost a statesman, but I actually lost a dear friend, and that holds true to this day. So I'm absolutely thrilled that we have the opportunity to honour his memory uh, immemorial in this fashion. And um, I too agree with Councillor Cristani and, and Councillor Smith that um, given a mixed love for Berwick, uh, the township of Berwick, he would be absolutely chuffed that part of it, and an important part of that, uh, would actually carry his name. So. Um, Congratulations to the officers and congratulations particularly on the grace and sensitivity with which you've been able to liaise with the family and present this proposal to Council tonight. Thank you, Councillor Aziz. Councillor Stablin. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. I'd just like to acknowledge um, this anniversary approaching and thank Mr Gillian and his team for that very sensitive approach um, and the work of the councillors together because we've all discussed this and it, has, it holds... Um, great emotion and feeling in our hearts. Um, and as we remember someone that I knew as Mr. Berwick, I think he was um, definitely uh, definitely such an icon in the Berwick area. And I think it's very fitting that we name something so prominent after him. Um, I'd like to take just a moment to acknowledge his beautiful wife, Kay, and to, to say that I hope 
um, she's got all her friends and family around her at this time and gives her the strength to get through the anniversary. They say the first year is the hardest. Um, having all those anniversaries around Christmas, Easter, birthdays and, and now the anniversary of his passing. So um, I, I do pray for God's strength for her at this time. Thanks, Thanks Councillor Stubble. And, and I'd just like to add my, to myself the, the words about the family. I hope the family are OK. I've had a bit of tragic loss myself and so has Councillor Rosario with uh, children and, and, and it is hard. But And, and from time to time it, it goes back to being just as hard. It never goes away. And we did lose a, a living legend and I'm glad that we can name something after him because it's so deserved uh, that a big part of Berwick that he loved so much and I still remember going to nights with other people raising money for so many different things and, and the latest one was the St John of God New Cancer Hospital. We went up and did a sports night up at uh, Kidinia Way and um, raised a whole heap of money for him uh, that he organised and he was just an absolute doer and uh, it's still hard to believe he's not with us so I endorse everybody's words and uh, Thank the officers so much for supporting and, and working with us to, to, to um, immortalise Mick uh, with a name right in the heart of the city that he loves so much. Thank you. Councillor Smith. Uh, yeah, just finished. Um, I often think about different stories about Mick, but one of the councillors... I don't do it as often as I used to. I used to often say when we had a lot of conflict on council and then we'd come to an agreement, I'd always say, all right, it's, it's time for a group hug. And the only person that would come rushing over for the hug was Mick Morland all the time. And it was always, and I'd be running away from him. Um, I'm, I'm not a religious person, but I can't help thinking tonight that standing next to me is Mick Morland with his arm on my shoulder saying, thanks, pal. Because you all know that's what he used to say, it was pal all the time. And I think he's saying that to all of us. And Mr Gilron, I reckon he'd be pretty impressed and happy with you too. So, so <laughs> you're his you. pal as well. So Thank um, thanks, Council, for this. I think it's a, a good outcome and, and, I, and I know Kay will be very pleased with it and the family. Thanks, Councillor Smith. Are there any further questions or dissent? Then that is carried. Thank you. We'll move on to item 6.18, Councillor Smith, Arts and Cultural Development. I'll wait for my partner in crime to get up because she'll be waiting for the questions that I'm no doubt going to, to give. Sorry, I just got to... I meant to mark the page and I didn't. Um, I'll be, we'll be moving the recommendation on page 93. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Second, Councillor Stable, and sorry we had a. Thank you. Um, Mr Mayor, um, I, I thank um, the officers for some words that they've given me, which you will hear for the first time and I will read for the first time. It's been <laughs> such a busy night, I haven't had a chance. So this report is reflective of how we are redefining arts in the City of Casey through its, the latest arts and cultural development strategy. This strategy will support Council's vision in creating Australia's most livable city through its goals of being a nation-leading arts and culture city, being the most inclusive arts and cultural experience in Australia, and being a hub for opportunities and community connection, connectedness. The arts and cultural development strategy is the result of rigorous consultation with over 300 residents from the Casey community, and it's informed by extensive research. This strategy was proudly co-designed with the Arts and Cultural Advisory Committee, and it's a testament to what can be achieved with meaningful collaboration. And we'd like to thank the Arts and Cultural Advisory Committee for their energy, their passion and their commitment to the arts. And I know some of them might be online watching tonight because I know they're pretty keen to see this go through. They, they did have some um, pretty important input into it. At our meeting last night, they were very pleased and uh, certainly hopeful that Council will adopt, adopt it tonight. Because it's not just hard work by, um, by themselves and their input, but certainly by the officers and the consultants that worked with us. The strategy is industry leading as it aligns to the Cultural Development Network's Measurable Outcomes Framework. This framework has been developed to measure the, the outcomes of cultural engagement and arts participation across the nation. Many arts institutions are challenged by this, however the team has delivered on a best practice model that will allow us to capture the contributions of cultural engagement, often considered intangible and immeasurable, and measure them using a systemised approach. Um, at our meeting last night, we had John Smithies. John Smithies is from the Cultural Development Network, and I've known John for a long time through his work 
on that committee, and he's, he's been involved in a lot of Casey projects, and he said something really interesting last night. We talked about the fact that in, he, he is adamant that Casey is a leader already in what we do, and this only strengthens it. But he, he made the comment that he, he puts it down to Casey's, um, the beginning of Casey's real uh, strength in the arts was the factory. He, he, he uses the factory as a model where every talks, and he says he's, he talked about the factory uh, when he does his international consultancy as well, because of, of what Casey produced with the factory in terms of um, what it provides to the, the community that use it. And for those that don't know what the factory is, I don't know, you might have been living on Mars for a few years, but the factory is our rehearsal centre for the arts down at Cranbourn. Um, it's, it's attached and next to the, the um, skate shed. And it has provided lots of arts um, uh, groups to get together, provide them a home, a rehearsal home. We also provide them storage space. Nearly, nearly all the, the, the main groups that use the factory all have a, um, a garage there. We have um, Bats Theatre Company have been tenants there for a long time with the uh, Belfry, the set building and, and costume storage they've got. And recently a new tenant is Windmill Theatre Company, who, who by the way, uh, I've got one more week to go of We Will Rock You in, in the Bunjil Theatre. So um, if you haven't been, you should get along. There, I've been to a lot of things in Bunjil Theatre since it opened, but there's nothing compares to what they've done. And they're, they're a local group, they're non-professional, and what they've done to that theatre in terms of transformation, all good, no damage, <laughs> as they keep reassuring me, um, is just mind-blowing. So I couldn't, I couldn't ask you... I couldn't recommend it more highly, so I'd go to that. Uh, but John was really... Uh, it, was, it was interesting. I hadn't really thought about it, but he just said the, the factory was really the, the impetus, uh, the start of, of Casey really looking after the art <coughs> and, and it's unique. There is still no, no other... He's, and he agreed last night, there is no other facility <coughs> anywhere in Australia, and he hasn't come across one in the world, that does what the factory does. Um, so that's pretty unique. We should be really proud of that. So... Thank you to the officers. I'm going to, I have to ask a question because she's waiting for it. She'll feel disappointed. She won't be able to go <laughs> home. So I'm going to ask you, in 50 words or less, <laughs> what's the benefit of the strategy? <clears throat> I'll through, let you go to a bit more than 50 if you need. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, the council <coughs> plan around being Australia's most livable city really gave us the courage to be bold. Uh, and for me, the alignment, or the clear alignment for the art strategy um, around being a nation leading arts and cultural um, ci city is really important to us. And we have this um, phenomenal um, facility at Bunjil Place that really is our platform. And it is a platform for us to be able to lead in a whole range of different art disciplines. Um, but it's not just about Bunjil Place. Across the city of Casey, we have wonderful facilities um, that our community um, really embrace and engage with. So it's important that we consider a municipal-wide approach to valuing um, all art forms to ensure that we've got a balance of community art as well as um, professional art that may be everything from visual arts to performing arts. So um, I'm really proud of this strategy. I feel that it's a, it's a vision that lines clearly with the council plan but also aligns <coughs> really well and supports the vision for Bunjil Place but also um, reflects the incredible talent we have within um, our arts and cultural development team to be able to take arts to the next level. Thank you, Carla. As, as a teacher, if I did a word count, I think she'd fail <laughs> on that one. But no, she won't. She, she did really well, so thank you. And I, I need to acknowledge we've got some arts officers here from the arts and cultural development team and, and Bunjil Place team, and, and they, they know how important I believe that the, the work they do is. And, and, um, and hopefully we all do. I think we all do. And, and we should all be very proud of the, of the work we've done in the arts. I know I rabbit on. I know I don't give up on it. But uh, the community appreciates it. So you should all be very pleased with it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, round of applause. Thank you. Um, don't, don't go away, Colette, because we have... A, I know it's a question. Yes. Councillor Flannery. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Um, Colleen... The work that you do and your team does is just absolutely remarkable. I come to Bunjil Place, you know, once, twice a week, and every time I get here, I see something different happening within our community. Uh, unbelievable. I think uh, Councillor Smith having the Windmill Theatre Company uh, come is a, an exciting uh, prospect for the city of Casey. I was, I've heard about it. I know he's spruced about it. 
I happened to go to a performance on Sunday and I had tears in my eyes through laughter. I, I was excited. I wanted, to, I wanted to keep on going. I didn't want it to end. The show was unbelievable. So anybody out there, anybody stream, uh, live streaming this, if you're not doing anything, go and watch uh, We Will Rock You. It, absolutely fantastic event. And I congratulate everybody, uh, congratulate everybody that uh, was involved in it. It's just an amazing show. And for an, am an amateur theatre company uh, that probably will break even out of the whole venture, you know, it, it's just truly remarkable. And Councillor Smith, you know, I've been down to the factory and... I know that, uh, you know, I haven't been fully involved in it, but I tell you what, I'm totally 100% behind you with what we do for the community. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Councillor Flannery, and um, maybe you picked up some more material for your jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that will that, never improve. <laughs> that will never for those improve. who don't know, he is the comedian of the group. So, look, um, would, is there any dissent or uh, questions on the matter? Then that is Carrie, but let's uh, all put our hands together for Colette McMahon Hoskinson. Thanks, Colette. Champion job. Please keep up the good work. Thank you very much. That's it for officers' reports. We'll move on to reports of committees. Is there a mover and seconder to receive and note the record of Assembly of Councils as listed in the agenda? Moved by Councillor Flannery, seconded by Councillor Jackson. Is there any dissent on that matter? Then that is carried. Are there any petitions that or joint letters that councils wish to present this evening? Nope. Urgent business. Are there any items of urgent business for this evening? <coughs> no. And <coughs> being no items of urgent business and then being knowing in camera, that is the conclusion of our council meeting. Thank you everyone for attending. And um, we'll see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>